Well, I was just minding my own business. I don't know why I didn't think of this before, but I was cleaning the leaves of my little Tatlia crosses, Epicatantes and the Chantilly lace and, you know, what else have we got here? The Atra Walker. And I was just cleaning them and I'm getting this, I don't like to say it, but fall feeling. Eh, it's like I have a certain routine leading up to the possible cold nights and bringing the orchids in at night and it, it's just kind of caught up with me and it's only the beginning of September. I have another eight weeks. But yeah, so while I'm, hang on a second. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for joining me. <laughs> the cleanup work has done, but I was just taking cotton swabs and wiping the leaves with some plain RO water. This is Ciliano's shower spray bottle, but it just has RO water. And during the tour of my, what was that? What, what, did, what did we do? Um, training orchids. Yeah, how to train orchids. I noticed how grimy my outer masks had gotten from handling the dust on them and then the wet and they would have spots on them and all this took me and I started to take a section down and I like to do things in in an order not just by shelf but also plant wise even though they live in different areas and I'm just cleaning away and I'm thinking what what are you doing look at this I'm finding things and I'm like Grab the camera and let's have a look. So bits and bobs surprises, a spontaneous one. And let's have a look because a long time ago I was moaning about my Chantilly lace, which is a very sad little plant when I got it. And it still is a sad little plant two years later. It has aborted three growth attempts. So I only have two to show for, and this one was last year's. And then this one is the second attempt at this year's growth. So it made it the first attempt dried off and didn't grow well but Ulla reminded me about the nugget Rick L put out there that the Chantilly lace loves loves calcium so more calcium for this one and uh, yeah I have a growth to show for for this year it's not anything really to write home about it's not going to be the blooming one but maybe next year's growth will produce something I don't know but we have strength in the plant. We now have it rooted in. Like tug test, it works. New roots have grown inside nicely and no fighting regarding trying to get them into the leka. So that's an update on Chantilly lace. If you've been with me from the start, it was one of the ones that I showed you early days about the frustration I have with this orchid. And I also have to say that because of its size or lack thereof, I doubt it's a Chantilly lace. Until I don't see it bloom, I doubt it. Unless it's a definite, definite seedling and not even a juvenile yet. We'll see. Right here is the Epicatanta Xiang Yu Gold Coast. A gorgeous, gorgeous little cross. Beautiful. Just the most brightest yellow and red blooms with the lines of the reds it, it's just it just pops it's awesome but um yeah my growth for this year we have a sheath and i think you can see the shadow in there so another little display of blooms is coming i have not been really fair to them this time this year because they were tucked in the corner back in my blooming alley there on the south little corner and they would get hit uh, with some spray and some fertilizer in their pots randomly. I haven't really done them justice, so I'm not expecting much of a bloom count out of uh, my Gold Coast this time around. But it'll be nice, despite that, to see some blooms. I think last year I had 12 on one spike, something like that. I definitely do not expect that this year. I've been too busy studying learning about YouTube, learning the different programs in order to be a little bit better at my videos and sound and it's just taken up a lot of time. So these guys, they fared very well and that's why they, I didn't really look at them, which is not an excuse, but that's what I'm sticking with. <laughs> and this is last year's growth here that I burnt. That was all last year's damage. I'm glad it didn't get infectious. 
But this year's growth came out nicely, despite the fact that it didn't get the, ten the attention that it deserved. But it has the same height as the year before, maybe a smidgen bigger. Actually, it is a smidgen bigger, isn't it? Still, I could have done better. They deserve better. And here's my very weak little Caticlia Atro Walker. Not so weak anymore. And I've been watching this one very closely this, this summer. It came from Orchid Garden many years ago. And what is this here? I just wiped it down. Could that just be cotton? It's possible. But uh, yeah, nothing ever, ever happened with this orchid. And you can see by the yellowing of the leaves of one of the biggest bulbs, I, was, I thought I was for sure going to lose it. And it was just tucked away on that one shelf underneath my Dendrobium tortile. You can see I made a little hollow in there just so that the humidity doesn't affect the back bulbs over there. But look, it's given two new growths, which in themselves are now producing roots. And it's looking a bit shiny and green as opposed to matte and a little bit sorry for itself. The bulbs have gotten now nice and plump as well. You can see the stress in the previous bulbs here and all the leaves show what it had to deal with. But they're coming up now. Shiny, shiny leaves. Maybe in two years, Atra Walker will show some blooms. Let's just get my water out of the way. Here's my Kyoguchi, happy field. Oh my goodness. And yes, there's a lot of background noise for which I apologize. I'm just gonna keep talking through it. And uh, I hope that um, you don't mind my apologies. So Kyoguchi, happy field. I love this little orchid. It's done really well. These are my sunburn tests, experiments, failures. <laughs> How much light can it take? This is a gorgeous little one. I have to say, it, it, it's like the blooms are like an oversized Rupiculus Lelia. And uh, it ha has the fragrance of a perfume by Issei Miyaki. Divine, absolutely divine. One of my favorite little ones and I wouldn't want to be without it. So I don't know if she's going to forgive me this year for not being so helicopter orchid mom on her if we're going to see the blooms but i can see that despite that the bulb this growth is going to be a margin bigger than previously and that one bloomed so i don't see why she should now throw a fit gorgeous oh the fragrance is a miyaki my goodness yes and then here is my little magic wand that has never bloomed for me, but it looks like she's going to try. This is the first time I see this orchid with a sheath. And look what direction she's growing in. Yeah, I'm going to leave it like this for this year, but at least the roots are going down into the pot. So she went the opposite direction to what I had anticipated which is a shame because I wouldn't have to bother this one for years and years and years. But you know what? I like it. It's not a big deal. Maybe this time next year, I'm just going to reposition her depending on where. Yep, there, look, she's sending out a new growth. Depending on where the new growth is coming. Well, now I know. I didn't even see that. And I've been misting this root and it's going black. Okay, that sucks. All right, we're gonna have to keep an eye out. Maybe it'll push through despite my radical misting here, because I've been trying to keep this root from desiccating on that lecker. Okay, so this is my little magic wand. There's a little sheath in the apex. Will it bloom or won't it? Only time will tell. But that was sort of my little thing here. I was cleaning and I'm like, what are you doing? Show, show your little ones. Show the ones that are starting to become something. Show the one that actually produced a growth, finally. But there's something else I want to show you. Look at this. Whew, have to step back. This is my Fios Tonkin Billying. And remember the growth? 
that I had doused with alcohol. If you haven't, I will try and find the series of the bits and bobs and surprises that I did it. And all this was brown and it looked like the growth was going to fail. Well, that was this outer leaf that was affected. And this was the leaf on the inside that was all brown and when it was really, really small. So it's lost a substantial amount of the leaf structure, but the growth itself was unharmed and it looked really bad for the longest time. And now look at it. And I would like to show you clean, beautiful fias leaves for as long as I have them, because unfortunately in my climate, they will not stay so beautiful and lush. And I have another little growth trying down here behind this bulb. I don't know if that's going to make it, but I'm not going to yank away at it. And this little growth right here is establishing its own little fires colony, which is great. This one, it was a runner from last year, and now it has its own little new growth and wants to become one of its own kind. Yeah, I'm really pleased and look how the roots are coming out right there. So misting a go-go. Oh, there's another little growth here. It's a bit late in the season. I don't know if it's going to make it, but goodness me. Yeah, look, I thought I had lost this growth entirely and here we are. Absolutely crispy, gorgeous. It reminds me of Caesar salad, romaine lettuce. <laughs> this one hurt when I saw it. This is my CG Roebling Blue Indigo. This was painful. I went to my garden center after many, many months of not leaving the house. And it was a very, very cloudy, muggy day. It had rained as well. So I didn't put my one flap of towel over this corner, thinking nothing of it. And then on the way back, I mentioned in the car that I think I have a stanopia burning in the sun because I saw the sun coming up. And I also thought that the angle of the sun, regardless, would have left this corner. And it didn't. And look what happened. Ugh, this is so frustrating. Ugh. Yeah, months and months of care of just pulling down one flap of a towel and one day, boom. But you know what? I'll take it. It hasn't died. It's, it's one leaf. It's in the back. Um, you know, one day I'm going to have to split it and I want to cut in, uh, into the rhizome and we'll, we'll see what happens if I can forfeit this bulb. I don't know. If I were to give a division of this away, of course, I wouldn't want this to be there. So anyway, we'll have to see. I'm talking now within 12 months. However, Roebling, Norman, I have a sheath on the latest new growth. This year, this Roebling has been exceptional in providing three new growing leads. So there's a sheath. If it will bloom, I do not know. But in here is another sheath. This one, and it is chubby at the base. So we will get Roebling blooms if I get my act together and do this right. So this sheath is chubby, which is a great thing. Look at my pretty flush of second Gara. Isn't that gorgeous? So this is my second flush and I almost prefer it to the first one that becomes so massive. It's not fair to say, but um, I like how spread out these blooms are. They're not all so clustered. You can actually really, really appreciate them. Oh, but I am distracted. I was just <laughs> Let me show you one more thing. And uh, this is now where my Rapiculus Lelias live. I've moved them from the east side to the south side, but they are now in perma shade. If it gets really, really hot, it's because of the terracotta here. But I'm testing how durable they are to hot climates, just to know for next year. So they don't get any direct sun anymore because they are now in the area where the angle of the sun provides permanent shade and they're, of course, on a shelf underneath a table, which helps a lot. 
but you can see the margin of the sun now to the left that's where all my ungracums live now behind that plant there and to the right now you can see where the sun is and this is permanent shade i don't even need the umbrella anymore but let me show you why <laughs> why i'm here look at those buds on my first about to bloom rupiculus lalia and this is lalia regina look oh come here there we go so i have at the moment i can expect four yeah that's gonna be so cool after all this time growing them up down here for the first time in lava rock i have an experiment going with leka and lava rock but there we are victoria regina she has already crept her way as my all-time favorite in <laughs> Rapiculus Lelia because she's going to bloom. There we go. Oh, well, it's like a can of Pringles. Once you pop, you can't stop. <laughs> oh, Brassavola flageralis. I just want to show you and then I'll wrap it up. I'll wrap it up, I promise. <laughs> it's in spike. It's the first one, first spike ever. And I'm sure it has nothing to do with the mount, but here it is doing fabulous so far. I'm misting it a lot, a lot. I'm not letting this mount dry out too much. I do not want to lose what could be one bloom. And I think I'm just going to wrap it up here right now because I was just cleaning my little Epicatlia crosses and you can see where this is going. Yap, 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 yap. <laughs> But if you made it this far, thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it. And if you have any questions, anything at all, any comments, observations, let me know. I really appreciate your company. And thank you so much for watching. Take care. Bye.